Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matty with the Toaster Bros with yet another super high-end build. 3080 Ti, Ryzen 5800X, $2700. This PC is also brought to you by our friends over at Antec, featuring their P120 Crystal. We've actually built in this case before, but this is the white version that they sent a bunch of fans to fill out and they look really nice. Antec makes a lot of awesome cases at a lot of different price points. This is one of their higher end cases, but we have done builds with some of their budget ones that feature a lot of great RGB, a lot of great airflow, and also, well, their Flux lineup, which is a kind of an innovative way of them doing airflow, by them using a reverse blade fan on the power supply basement to add extra cooling to the graphics card. So link down below to this case and uh, check out all other Antec builds. Thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. And uh, yeah, let's talk more about this build, shall we? So some of the core components that make this build so awesome yet so expensive are the Ryzen 5100X, an RTX 3080 Ti, which just dropped, and also this Crosshair 8, which I didn't even know that there was another seven before this, but a very, very expensive board known as being one of the best boards out there. So really excited to get our hands on it and try it out. Let's go ahead and talk about each individual part and how it makes up this PC build. This got there? is the Ryzen 5800X, which is an 8-core, 16-threaded processor, probably one of the best processors you can get right now for gaming. And what's awesome about these Ryzen processors is unlike the graphics card shortage, AMD is actually starting to get all their new 5000 series in stock. We were just on Newegg this morning and we were able to see all of the 5000 series in stock. So make sure you get one soon if you're looking at it. And to cool that uh -huh. CPU, we have the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240 ARGB. They're actually also, you know, a big sponsor of this build. So we're gonna have to check out their RGB fans, although we may just be using Antec fans on it. We're not really sure yet. It really just depends on how happy all the RGB is together. No clue if those are ARGB or not. So I guess we'll find out. <laughs> big thanks to Asus for sending over this ROG Crosshair 8 VII <laughs> Dark Hero. There's a lot of different um, Crosshair boards. This is like one of the most expensive. Um, Dark Hero, pretty cool looking board. Uh, and there's probably a picture on the back. Oh yeah, look at that. We got RGB, we have super huge VRM coolers. If you wanna do any type of overclocking, any type of um, you know crazy Crossfire SLI or anything, this is going to be the board to do that because very high. And now this just wouldn't be a cool build if we did not fill those RAM slots with RGB RAM. We have a four by eight gig kit, 32 gigs, 3600 megahertz, RGB Vengeance Pro from Corsair. This is really some of the best room you can get. You are spending an extra 30 to $40 just for the extra two sticks. No extra capacity though. You're just getting two eight gig sticks as opposed to two 16 gig sticks, four eight gig sticks as opposed to two 16. I said that right. And once again, kind of keeping with the Corsair vibe for your storage and memory, this is the MP600 Gen 4 PCIe NVMe M.2 heatsink cooled NVMe crazy SSD. But yeah, it's Gen 4, it's a one terabyte. It comes with a really cool heatsink on it. Um, and yeah, we don't use Gen 4 very often because it is a little bit more pricey than normal uh, three by four. But we think for a build like this with that high of a board, that high of RAM and just that high of everything, it deserves Gen 4. Now for the graphics card, big thanks to NVIDIA for hooking us up with this brand new 3080 Ti that just released, well, recently. I don't know when this video is going live, but it's only been a couple days since this card actually came out. But 3080 Ti, it's basically like an RTX 3090, but with less VRAM. So it's a big discount if you can actually pick one of these things up. But obviously, 3080 Ti is great for 4K gaming. Pretty much anything you throw out, you're gonna have no problems whatsoever maxing it out. And we're very excited to use it in this build. Now, Antec was nice enough to send over their Neo Eco 80 Plus Platinum Power Supply. This is a 750 watt, I believe, fully modular power supply. Um, we aren't a huge fan of fully modular power supplies because for the most part, you're gonna have to use the basic connectors. But if you're somebody who really wants to get like custom length cables and things like that, fully modular is the way to go. But Antec was nice to send this one over and it's a pretty high quality unit. We're very excited to use it. And 750 watts should be plenty for this PC build. And last but certainly not least, the P120 Crystal from Antec. Now this is the white version. It has, well, a nice look to it. It has this big glass eye panel that goes all the way around and it opens with this little lever. So that's really cool. No worrying about unscrewing the side panel every time you wanna access your PC. But basically how we're gonna do this is we have seven RGB fans. We're not totally sure how we're gonna set this up because we do wanna use the RGB on the Arctic liquid cooler because well, uh, Arctic's first take at RGB, we gotta give it a shot. Um, so we're gonna try to put these fans in the best position possible, um, but you can pretty much max this thing out with all seven fans if you want to. So we're gonna see how that goes. Um, yeah, let's just not waste any more time and put this thing together.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this super high-end gaming PC all booted up and ready to go, let's talk about those benchmarks real quick. Now, we decided to test this PC in, well, a handful of titles, those being Call of Duty Cold War, Fortnite, Apex Legends, Borderlands 3, and Death Stranding. Now, let's get one thing out of the way. We did test this PC at 1080p, mainly because our main benchmarking monitor is 1080p because, well, we mainly focus on budget PC builds, but that doesn't mean these benchmarks are irrelevant. There's a lot of people who like to play at 1080p 240 hertz on like a 240 hertz display so we came in with the approach of testing the 3080 ti with the 5800x for that reason trying to get as close to 240 fps or for the really crazy people out there 360 fps for a 360 hertz gaming experience so first up with call of duty cold war on pretty much max settings at 1080p we pretty much achieved that getting well over 200 plus fps with a few setting modifications here and there and maybe enabling dlss if you wanted to you probably could get the 200 300 fps in a game like cold war on max settings the 3080 ti is being pushed to its limits here it's around 98 99 percent usage so we aren't relying on that 5800x and also it does go to show that the 5800x is not a bottleneck which is what i was kind of worried about with this build initially but the 5800x can definitely handle its own it has become quickly one of my favorite cpus for the best value for money gaming pcs that you could put together next up in fortnite on performance mode well this is more of a test of the Ryzen 7 5800X, we ended up getting an average of over 500 plus FPS, sometimes hitting 700 FPS. I think it's safe to say you could play on a 360 hertz monitor if you wanted to with this PC, no problems whatsoever. Not many people need 700 plus FPS, but if you're a pro Fortnite player out there, the 5800X should definitely not be overlooked. I know the 5600X is a great option, a little bit cheaper, but spending that more money for the eight cores and 16 threads gives you a lot more flexibility and just general snappiness. Eight core systems are just generally snappier than six core ones. And the 5600X, while yes, it is a great CPU, the 5800X will probably give you much more longevity and upgrades to future graphics cards, even though I don't think you're gonna be upgrading from this 3080 Ti soon because it is an absolute beast. Next up in Apex Legends on max settings, I forgot to disable the FPS limiter, so I just ran with it. Uh, we were pretty much locked at 144 FPS, and I would imagine we'd be over 200 plus FPS with the frame rate limiter removed. Apex Legends is a little bit more demanding esports title compared to games like Fortnite, um, so this is a good game to test, but if you really want to play Apex, you would have no problem whatsoever pretty much maxing this game out at 1080p, and it goes to show for any game that we tested, you could easily play at 1440p and 4K uh, with lower settings or sometimes higher settings especially if you're playing at 1440p uh, this graphics card would be absolutely awesome for a really good 1440p ultra wide or just like a 165 hertz gaming experience Next up in Borderlands 3 with the built-in benchmark on the badass quality preset, which I absolutely love by the way, we averaged 149 FPS. Borderlands 3 is a more demanding AAA title and getting over 149 FPS on a preset that is mainly just meant to stress the crap out of your system is pretty impressive. Of course, you could run on like higher settings or medium high settings if you want to get close to that 240 FPS target, but it just goes to show you the 3080 Ti is definitely an awesome card and i'll be honest if the market was normal and you could buy a 3080 for 699 i'd probably say just buy the 3080 it's a better value but given the market is what it is and the fact that they're just trying to make a card that would be easier to get compared to the 3090 because it has less vram and maybe easier to manufacture i mean i can't hate nvidia for doing that and i just kind of am blindly hoping that they're just trying to do something to make this whole situation all better for you gamers Next up in Shadow of the Tomb Raider on high settings, we averaged 176 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is one of our favorite AAA benchmarks because it's very demanding even to this day and pretty much represents most high-end AAA titles out there. So if you're playing games like Cyberpunk or games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I know there's a lot of people who dive into this game, you pretty much will have a 100 plus FPS experience on max settings at 1080p and you can expect similar results with optimized settings at 1440p and 4K. And last but certainly not least, we decided to test Death Stranding and using max settings with the DLSS settings set to quality because I wanted to test DLSS a little bit, we got over 230 FPS. Death Stranding is a good example of a AAA title that takes advantage of DLSS. So if you're looking to play games at 4K, you can use DLSS to get a performance boost without really sacrificing much in terms of quality. 
Now, I'll be honest, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense at 1080p unless you're really, really, really trying to get to that 240 or 360 FPS mark for high refresh rate gaming. In that situation, it would make sense. It is ideally mainly for you playing at 4K or 1440p and you, and you really want to downsample and use that AI upscaling to get a, well, better overall result. So overall, very happy with this PC build. It is very expensive, obviously, and given the market, it's going to be hard to, well, replicate at home because the 3080 Ti is probably sold out everywhere and you're going to have to pay scalper pricing if you really want one. But if you can get your hands on one and if the market does get better and you're looking at this video and you see a shiny 3080 Ti in stock on shelves and you can pick it up, one, please teleport me to that time period. And two, you will not be disappointed with this card. It is definitely a great option. How about we going to bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. So of course, with a over $2,700 gaming PC, you're probably going to get some really good performance and that is exactly what we saw with this 3080 Ti 5800X PC. The benchmarks we did don't show this PC justice. It can easily play any game we throw at it at 4K if you really wanted to. So if you're a 4K gamer or someone who just has endless money to spend on gaming PCs, definitely consider the 3080 Ti with the 5800X. Of course, you can go with something like a 5950X if you want to go really balls to the wall and get probably one of the best gaming PCs you can on the market. But I was really impressed to see how well the 5800X actually handles a higher end GPU. It's a really good CPU for the money. And in terms of price performance, I think this build does a a really good job at delivering some awesome value for the money. Another thing that we really like, which we saw a lot of YouTubers kind of don't enjoy, is the 3080 Ti. Well, we think for the price versus performance of it almost being like a 3090, um, the 3080 Ti seems like a no-brainer to many people. The main issue is a lot of the partner boards sell for a heck of a lot more. We're talking 1299 MSRP on this Founders Edition, but you might be looking at close to $1,800 for a partner board. So we recommend trying to pick up the Founders Edition if you can, but hey, if anything's cheaper than the 3090, it still might not be a bad deal. And everything is put into perspective when you think of the current market. If everything was normal, you could get the 3080 at 699, then I mean, I'd probably understand people's arguments, but the market is what the market is, right? now so paying whatever you are right now for a card that's basically a 3090 with less vram well you know it's a pretty decent value and hopefully this does uh hold us over to make the market a little bit better and uh well you know we can only hope really so as always we hope you guys really enjoyed today's video check out our other two youtube channels and our twitch.tv slash toasty bros and don't forget to like comment and subscribe links down below our affiliate links we'll see you guys in the next one and hey, also aside from our other YouTube channels and also our Twitch, we also have lots of social medias for both businesses. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, we have a lot of those. TikTok, we post a lot of videos of random things to do in the office, like playing with the air compressor with uh, Nerf darts. That's a fun time. So uh, link down below, a lot of different social media. Get some more Toasty Bros action. That's it. Bye. Peace. Bye. Bye.